Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I'm here to help you finish your Christmas shopping list and let everyone else over there stiff arm their competition while trying to fight off that trip to fan on Turkey Night. Now, what we did was we partnered with Rochester Sports Autographs, the largest JSA authenticated autograph distributor in the United States, where you can get up to 75% off over 30,000 autographed sports collectibles during this holiday season. They have something for everyone. But how is RSA able to offer such great deals on JSA authentication, you ask? Well, they do this by making deals directly with athletes so there are no extra markups, and they choose to then pass that savings on to you, the customer. Now, all orders from Rochester Sports Autographs are top quality and shipped to your door with top authentication and a money-back guarantee. But hurry up because customers are so stark raving mad for RSA that memorabilia sells out daily. All you have to do is head over to shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. Again, that's shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. So don't wait to bring home your favorites and own a piece of sports history for you and the loved ones on your shopping list this holiday season. Now it's time to take a sports break. A look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends of sports history. This is Darren Hayes of Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your place for all things great in sports history. And welcome to your sports break, where we will go over some of the greatest events that happened on November 7th, the athletes that performed them in sports history, and the uniform numbers that may be associated with them on that day that they performed the great event. Well, before we get to that, I want to make sure that you know you can give us feedback. We love feedback of all kinds, good, the bad, the ugly, and maybe some promising things that we could do to make ourselves better. Always looking to be better, and uh, we love to have your feedback to help us do that. You can do it by emailing us, pigskindispatch at gmail.com. Very simply, drop us a line. We much appreciate it. We will answer each and every email, and we appreciate the feedback that for those of you that have done it already and helped us to make uh, a better website, podcast, and everything else, uh, social media, to have a better sports history experience. Now let's get to those uniform numbers for November 7th. We're going to talk today about numbers 44, 39, 1, 32, 14, and number 30. We're going to start November 7th, 1933, and Pennsylvania voters overturned a blue law that permitted playing sports on Sundays. In anticipation of this, the NFL had already awarded franchise to both Pittsburgh and Philadelphia uh, to start the season. The writing was on the wall that they pretty much figured that the referendum would pass. The Eagles, well, they started the season with four bye games in the first four weeks, and then two away games and a Wednesday evening home contest before having their first Sunday home game on November 12th, five days after this November 7th referendum was passed. The Pittsburgh Steelers, who at that time were called the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, a football program, well, they likewise played four Wednesday home games. They started week one just like everybody else, but played four Wednesday home games and then two away games before hosting the Brooklyn Dodgers on Sunday, November 12th at Forbes Field. Some great sports history there in the state of Pennsylvania. November 7, 1954, the Cleveland Browns. Number 44, Chet Hanulak. He set a franchise record with seven punt returns. Well, when you have seven punt returns, you must be playing some good defense and possibly some good offense. Well, the Browns did both. They won that game by the largest margin of victory in franchise history, 59 points, defeating the Washington Redskins that day, 62-3. to November 7th, 1957, the Philadelphia Phillies pitcher, number 39, Jack Sanford, won the National League Rookie of the Year for some great pitching that he did on the mound for the Phillies. November 7th, 1962, Glenn Hall, who wore number one for the Chicago Blackhawks, set a National Hockey League record of 503 consecutive games as a goalie. Imagine that. You take 503 games, straight games, of having black rubber discs shot at you at amazing speeds and uh you know and that's before they wore the, the face guards too so probably took some off the noggin as well uh november 7 1963 the new york yankees catcher elston howard number 32 became the first african-american to be voted as the american league's most valuable player november 7 1978 
Boston Red Sox, Jim Rice, number 14, won the American League MVP for his team. Looking back, it's kind of a great uh, fitting tribute back to Elston Howard, who 15 years earlier that we just mentioned, trailblazed and became that most valuable player in the American League, sort of opening the door uh, to that world to very fairly give MVPs to people of all colors and races. November 7th, 1989, the Baltimore Orioles' Greg Olson, number 30, became the first relief pitcher to win the American League Rookie of the Year Award. Uh, who, how many of us can remember that with uh, Greg Olson and the great season that he had coming in in relief and uh, you know getting, getting some uh, Baltimore Orioles victories uh, because of his uh, great pitching that he would come in in relief. So, you know, that is our sports history for this November 7th. Get your sports break here for another day. And we want to make sure you know that we do this each and every day, bringing you some great sports history along with the sports numbers that people had associated with them when they did these events. Uh, if you, again, we'd like to have your feedback. Pigskin dispatch at gmail.com. You can find more sports history at sportshistorynetwork.com. Uh, 30 some different podcasters there just bringing some great sports history each and every day. Family friendly, thousands of hours of downloading, and it's always relevant because it's history. And also our websites, jerseydispatch.com, where this is originating from, and pigskindispatch.com, the uh, websites of the pig pen. And don't forget our audio drama, Orville Mulligan, sports writer. You can find that here on uh, Sports History Network and on OrvilleMulligan.com. Till tomorrow, everybody. Have a great Sports History Day. Sorry, but my pitching coach just called timeout. He's coming out to the mound. I think I'm going to get yanked for a reliever. We'll see you back tomorrow for some more great sports history on Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel. You get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and we're able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds, as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website, seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.